Hello, I'm Emma Hartnell Baker. Now, I created the Speech Sound Picks Approach uh, logo myself to give you a really visual idea about what it's all about and that it starts with speech and language. I'm helping them to be able to hear the smaller parts in words. So we need children to be able to hear. When they say words, we need to be, them to be able to hear the smaller parts in those words. And this is something that does not come naturally for an awful lot of children. And this can be the biggest predictor of either reading failure or reading success. Some children are lucky, they've got it, they can hear straight away. You say sat and they can hear sat. And they can also blend sounds so they can blend it into pin but a lot of children don't, can't and so what we do with this approach is presume that the children can't so that we're making sure we're meeting the needs of every child rather than waiting for children to fail before we then start to give them an intervention so we're starting off with speech we're helping children to really hear those smaller parts and sounds in our words and then we're teaching them there are pictures of these sounds we call them sound pics so, for example, if we start off in prep or before prep listening for the s speech sound, then we can say to children, here, look, this is one of the pictures that represents the s speech sound. Here's our first sound pick. This is a sound pick for the s speech sound. There's a speech sound cloud to represent every single speech sound in the English language. Here's the cloud representing the r. So when spelling words with the r sound in them, they know it's going to be one of these sound picks. And as long as children can hear, they can learn to read and spell very quickly with this approach. It's the ideal approach for children at risk. There's a huge um, focus on speech and language and also on modifying brain networks. We're actually shaping brains. So one of the first things you're going to need to do is to be able to learn to speak in speech sounds. You can do this at any time in the day. The child could be having a drink and you could say, oh, are you going to have a sip of your drink? What are you going to have? To make this easier, we have a family, a speech sound picks family, and they only speak in sounds. The children then work out what they're trying to say, what words they're trying to say. <laughs> teaching that's also fun. My dogs for a walk on the beach in my, what do you call the thing that you put on your feet on the beach? Or you take them off your shoes. Thumbs! Do you know in England we call them flip flops? Flip flops! Yeah. <laughs> 
child in prep has made a collage um, of things that have that she where she can hear the <sighs> speech sound when she says them I know she's written the <sighs> letter but that's what we need to be careful of we're not actually focusing on the letter F we're focusing on the speech sounds and hearing that <sighs> because the <sighs> in dolphin is a different picture than the <sighs> in foot so what we do is we'll have a speech sound picks bank this is introduced about halfway through the term there's a sound picks bank for every speech sound and they're all about 40 centimetres by 30. So we have a speech sound cloud to represent every speech sound in the English language and you can find them on Facebook. If you go to photos, you can just download them for free. So here we've got um, the speech sound cloud that represents the f speech sound. Now we've got inside the speech sound cloud all the pictures, all the sound picks that represent that speech sound. And what I've done here, this is for prep and year one. So, for example, if they're writing about a dolphin and they're listening and they can hear d, o, u, f, i, n, and they're not sure which is the f, so they might have found the other sound picks, but they're not sure which is the, the sound pick for the f speech sound. So what I can say to them is go and find the f speech sound bank and um, have a look at number two. So they can go up to number two, take it out, take it to their tables um, and copy it so that they know that's the sound pick for the f in dolphin. Whoops! <laughs> obviously you attach this to your wall. So all the resources are on the Facebook page. You can, you know, obviously you can make all these yourselves. There's, um, but what I've actually done as well is I've put a picture and a word um, that's got that sound pick in it. So we've got the gruff and I've obviously put the f that sound pick in red. We've got phone, we'd have dolphin with that one as well, laugh, foot, giraffe. So I'd say this is for year one and two. And if you were working through, you'd work throughout the school so that because the children need to learn, um, get to go with all of the speech sound clouds and learn all of the sound picks. Some of them are obviously high frequency, so we're really focusing on the high frequency sound picks. But we want to really give them the um, really fantastic skills for spelling.
Now what we might do in the, uh, the, the reason that we've got these pockets here is because obviously in prep and year one, they're still remember, or especially in prep, they're still remembering how to form the letters. So even if you say it's this one, they won't remember. So they can't sort of just have a look and remember. They have to actually take it with them to their tables to copy it down. But as the, the children become more proficient at writing, so they're actually forming the letters correctly, then you can change this. So instead of having a, um, a sound picks, uh, you'll have the, the sound picks there, but instead of having these for handwriting, then you can have a, a card that's got words on it that have got, you know, that in. So you would have a list that might have phone, dolphin, etc. And you would have that in, in there. So the children then are actually looking at words and highlighting them. And you can do it as a, you know, as an exercise in discovery. So any child that finds um, the, the words with those sign picks in could actually write it on the list themselves and perhaps put their initial or, or whatever. So we've got some, um, you know, we're actually working collaboratively on this. Now you might choose just to have this without these pictures. You might choose with the children which pictures they want to have on there. It's up to you. But this is, let's say, this is a, a good tool to use, especially in prep and year one, where we really want them to, to be listening for the speech sounds, listening for how many speech sounds there are in words, writing those lines, and they can put the numbers underneath to help them for ordering, um, and then working out which of the sound picks they need. So that's spelling. So if, if in the early years they're getting used to that strategy for spelling, it becomes a lot easier for older students as well. So there's a lot less, you know, needed for a lot less memorising and guessing and whatever. Um, traditional spelling tests are not effective because, they, you know, it tends to to be retained in the short-term memory and we actually want them to be able to not only remember it but also be able to use it so transfer that knowledge into their work so I'd much rather on a spelling test that they actually you know if they had to put the f in a word that they actually wrote the word and used all of these tried all of these and then um, underline the one that looked right which is what I call the dictionary code so um, I prefer them to do that and they get a mark. So if they do dolphin and they put dolphin, you know, five times with this di with a different sound pick on where the f um, sound pick needs to go, then they will get a mark. So they would actually get five marks, but they'd also get another mark for getting the correct one, the dictionary code one. So that shows us far more about their knowledge of the code rather than traditional spelling tests, which just tells us if it's right or wrong. And really, that doesn't actually tell us anything. It doesn't help us as teachers, other than to know which children have, you know, learnt them the night before or, or whatever. It doesn't actually show us which children are going to remember it um, or which children have, have sort of stored it in their long-term memory. The children were listening to the ooh sound, so we did no room on the broom for, and so they created the sentence, and created the sentence, but then they chose which word they wanted to have. So when the little girl chose elephant, what I could do, have done is then gone to show her the, the, the sound picks bank so that she could choose the right one. Piece of paper. Oh, let's have a look to mine. No room on the broom for the elephant. I love that. And there's another for hers long trunk. what can I do now? So so we're taking a direct, systematic and explicit approach to the teaching of the, the alphabetic code, but making sure that we're starting first with the speech so that children can actually hear the smaller parts in words and learn which sound picks represent them. We're also using inquiry learning, so at every opportunity we're helping children naturally investigate and learn about the code, even if it's not in line with the order in which we're teaching the code. So it's inquiry learning and explicit teaching.
join us on Facebook for free support and resources. Thanks for watching.